Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're ready for some hot news, hot news. I did that for everybody who's been asking. There you go. We're gonna jump into it in just a little bit, but before we do, today's video sponsor is betterhelp.com. This is a service that I personally use was using before they came on as a sponsor. I can't advocate enough how much taking care of your mental health as well as your physical health is something that kind of everybody should be doing. So betterhelp.com is a website where you can find affordable professional licensed counselors who can meet with you on your schedule whenever you want, however you want them to. And if you just want a new counselor, after you get matched with one in the first 24 hours, you can just click a button. It's barely an inconvenience to change that. The rates start from $35 to $65 per week, which is a steal when it comes to counseling. And if it happens to be too rich for your blood, there is financial aid available and you can apply for that when you check it out. So if you're over 18, you can head on over to betterhelp.com forward slash UFD to get started on your counseling today. And even if it's not like for actual issues you have, but just like actually talking to somebody and like getting life coaching, also totally fine. I like total advocate for making sure that you are taken care of because you are important. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the hot news. So for the first bit of hot news we have today, I actually wanna give a shout out to Linus because they released a pretty cool video last night where they took the i7-8086K, which is the 40th anniversary edition of the original Intel 8086, and they made their own custom IHS with like engraving on it and Linus Tech Tips special anniversary edition. Really cool, totally recommend that video. It was fun to watch. Good job, Linus. Papa Linus. And now I have an article that's actually gonna be quite exciting for Reese, since he's our uh, resident Photoshop guy. Adobe has now updated Photoshop to have better AI for the content aware fill that they do so that there's less errors, there's more just like actual generation of real behind the scenes stuff. So they're showing an image of where they removed a bee and then the AI generated a flower, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Good job, uh, good job Adobe's. Let's get the robots to take over all of our software. That's what I'm looking forward to. AI generated video editing so that Rickus can, can be out of a job. Right? He, he, he's not okay with this. But speaking of bad Photoshop design, we now have uh, pictures of Mercedes-Benz new autonomous electric cars. And it looks like Spider-Man just kind of like puked on them. Like, I, I don't know how to best describe this, but it's hideous. And wow, Mercedes, I really thought you were above this. Uh, the technology is cool. Autonomous electric vehicles, very great. Uh, seating for 12 people total, pretty cool concepts. Hideous design. I hope this never makes it to the market. Wow. Speaking of Spider-Man, uh, cause it's a video game. I'm gonna talk about video games now. We now have the PC requirements for the Blackout uh, beta for Call of Duty 4, Black Ops 4, and then we also have the PC requirements for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you go ahead and look, the minimum specs for Blackout beta is gonna be GTX 660 or an AMD 7950, and then recommended is gonna be a 1066 gig or an RX 580. And then on the Assassin's Creed side, we have minimum recommendations of a 660 or an R9 285. How are those in the same league? What? What? Uh, for a target of 720p 30. At 1080p 30, you're looking at a 970 or an R9 290X. And then for a recommended 4K 30, they're talking about a Vega 64 or a GTX 1080. How is an R9 285 the same thing as a GTX 660? Tell me that, riddle me that one. For 720p low? For 30 frames per second? What the crap? Also, like Ubisoft, how is your recommended specs 30 frames per second? on PC, stop this crap. Don't, uh, bad, bad Ubisoft. Oh, Ubisoft. In yesterday's hot news, we actually reported on some leaks of the Coffee Lake refresh chips that are expected to come out within the next month. And it turns out that there is now a leaked review on the Core i7-9700K from El Chapuzas Informatico, uh, which is a Spanish tech publication. They put out 14 different tests with the 9700K, full benchmark suite galore. It basically looks like everything we've expected it to be. So not fantastic, not great. If you already have Coffee Lake, unless you need the extra cores, and if you already need the extra cores, you probably are on Ryzen. Why Intel is kind of where I'm at right now. One of the weirdest things is that if you look at the review, the picture of the system that they use has the motherboard blurred out, which would I be because I presume that somehow like the Z390 board that they're likely using is under NDA, but the chip that they got isn't. So that's a weird like caveat. I don't know. 
What do you guys think? Are you excited for the 9700K? Are you just wondering why Intel's being Intel? Let me know in the poll right up there. Yes, Coffee Lake refresh, no Coffee Lake refresh, no pricing, nothing else, just performance benchmarks, and it's meh. And in a leak that we've heard probably a bajillion times, the iPad Pro that's supposed to be announced on Wednesday, tomorrow, uh, will likely have USB Type-C. I can't count how many times I've heard Apple devices are supposed to get USB Type-C type charging, but it's a lot and I'll believe it when I see it. And then there's also leaked images of the new Google Pixel Book, which is supposed to be unveiled on October 9th alongside the new Pixel 3. Uh, do you guys care about the Pixel Book? Let me know up there. It has thinner bezels. I don't know. Like Chromebooks are like a really weird market segment. I'm not sure if any of you guys care whatsoever, but new ones. Speaking of more leaks, we now have AMD leaks on the potentiality of a Ryzen 7 2800X. This was talked about back when Zen Plus first launched with the Ryzen 2000 series. Jim Anderson, which was their senior vice president at the time, he's now left, basically said that the 27 and the 2700X were perfect for the market segment right now, and that there's no need for something like a 2800X, although it could be a possibility in the future, which is why these rumors even exist. There's a Cinebench score leak showing a Ryzen 7 2800X showing 10 cores coming in with a Cinebench score of 2,130-ish, which is a pretty good score, but a lot of this doesn't necessarily line up with what we already know about Zen Plus and the architecture. The core complexes that exist with Zen processors are in bits of four. So like you could have a 12 core processor, but you would have to have at least three CCXs active. You could get 10 cores by like, having four, four, and two, but then that might cause issues with Infinity Fabric in the way that like this core complexes actually talk to one another. A lot of this is actually kind of interesting and odd and not necessarily, like we can't confirm that this would actually come, but a 10 core processor is possible, just unlikely if we are gonna see an entry into the market, I would expect it to be 12 cores. But then at the same time, I'm not necessarily sure AMD even needs to do this to compete with Intel. Their Ryzen 2700X is still a great value compared to what we're expecting the 9900K to be. So if, as long as they keep on trucking and then we get seven nanometer Zen 2 sometime early next year, then I think we can all be happy about it. The 2800X releasing this far into the product cycle, which is several months after the fact, I'm not sure I agree with it coming out. What do you guys think? Do you think that AMD should release a 2800X? And if so, is 10 cores something that you would expect or is 10 cores not enough? Is it too much? Would you prefer an eight core that could actually run at four and a half to five gigahertz? That would be preferred. We're likely not gonna see that till Zen 2, but yeah, 2800X possibility. But speaking of AMD's rumored CPUs, the 2300X and the Ryzen 5 2500X, which we have been talking about for a few months now, which have been rumored to be released, were finally announced by AMD. And it turns out that they're not gonna be for general consumers. They will literally only be for OEM desktops environments. So if you wanted a 2200G without the integrated graphics card, then you're out of luck unless you wanna buy like a Dell and an HP system. And they also released a couple of energy efficient models, the Ryzen 5 2600E and the Ryzen 7 2700E. Again, also for OEM environments coming in a 40 watt, 45 watt TDP instead of the freaking like 95 and 105 watt that you have on the Ryzen 5 and 7 lineups. There you go. So new AMD CPUs. And now in the next story, we've actually already talked about this uh, discussion that AIM, or NVIDIA's CFO has had uh, about just general things that are going on with the 10 series and the 20 series. Yesterday, we talked about how they're gonna keep the 10 series along at least until the end of the year. Well, there is also hints in that conversation that the 2060 and below will not have ray tracing cores. Uh, as the CFO put it, she said, we'll start with the ray tracing cards. We have the 2080 Ti, the 2080, and the 2070 overall coming to the market. So start with the ray tracing cards, make it seem like the RTX 2070 and above are the only ones that are getting ray tracing cores. We don't know about tensor cores on anything below. They could be dropping those to cut costs as well, but I would expect us to see a 2060 coming in at at least $350, if not 400, considering the 1060 launched at $300, Founders Edition that is, and then like the 2070 is $600 Founders Edition. That's a huge gap. 
I'm pretty sure it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. This is, even if they cut the things, they're still gonna be ridiculously expensive, in my estimation. We'll have to see. NVIDIA's not trying to screw us over, right? All right, and now we're gonna steal something out of TechLink's page, and we're gonna do something called Tech Done Fast, because it's like quick bits, whatever, I don't care. I'm not gonna do this as a regular segment. I just wanna power through these next few articles. So PUBG is introducing a snow map. People discovered it in the code of the game. Fantastic, good job. And then Vizio, uh, TV maker, actually got sued for monitoring people's TV usage and then selling it off when they never reported that they would actually do that. And now the TV actually has to alert people that they're doing that and then also notify them of the fact that they can apply for the class action lawsuit so you can sue the company that made the TV that you have. Good job, Vizio. We had to screw that one up, really. And then uh, San Francisco Bay Area is blocking 5G deployment t cell towers because they fear that uh, cancer could be caused by these things. Uh, so they're doing more investigation before they actually approve any sort of installation of these 5G deployments in Marin County. And then we also have LG unveiling new ultra-wide monitors called the Ultra Gear monitors, one with FreeSync, one with G-Sync, 3440 by 1440. IPS panels, nano IPS actually, that is. The G-Sync panel has 120 hertz refresh rate with four millisecond grade to grade response time, whereas the FreeSync 2 monitor has 144 hertz with a five millisecond grade to grade response time. That's pretty dope. And then we have a test of LG OLED TV showing that they can burn in just after 4,000 hours, even though the company claims that they can run for 30,000 hours, which is the equivalent of 10 years at eight hours a day, whereas 4,000 hours is significantly less than that, and is, you're actually seeing burn in on that. This is from a video on Artings where they, they demonstrate that, so we'll leave a link up there if you wanna check that out. And that's gonna wrap it up for all the hot news we have today. Let me know what you thought about the Ryzen 2800X coming out, the GTX 2060, and below not having ray tracing or anything else we discussed like the 9700K review on here. Your thoughts down in those comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It shows tremendous support. Also, please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Don't forget to that today's video was brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. So if you need professional, affordable, licensed counseling, check out betterhelp.com. I use them, they're great, love them. The paid advertisement or not, We'll continue to use them. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Love you too. I don't think you get it. Love you too is the ultimate retort. When anybody's talking to you, if you say, I love you too, what do they have? They have nothing. Because you're presuming their love for you already. And you know, I love you too. There you go. Shuts down any hostile conversation.